The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Welcome to Real Agriculture's Wheat School series. I'm Kara Oosterhaus. Today I'm standing here with Elmer Kaskew, who's an agronomist with Ducks Unlimited. Elmer, can you tell me a bit about some of the winter wheat trials that you have been conducting here in Carberry, Manitoba? So my job with Ducks Unlimited is to help uh, promote and work on winter cereals. And winter cereals are important to Ducks Unlimited because it creates great nesting habitat for ducks, obviously. Undisturbed ground in the spring, so that's the interest uh, by Ducks Unlimited in winter cereals. And what we have back in the background here is um, our winter cereal uh, fertility uh, project. Uh, some of the new winter wheat varieties have some incredible yield potential. Some of the new varieties under irrigation in southern Alberta yielding in the 120 to 125 range, 130. So the goal here was to try to demonstrate those types of yields. We have irrigation, access to irrigation here. So we were trying to demonstrate those types of yields in southern Manitoba. We ran into a few problems last fall because harvest didn't cooperate. We had snow mid-September, snow at the end of September. So consequently, we didn't get the seeding done when we would have liked. Uh, we have to the left of me here a September 30th seeding date. I was too nervous to let that, uh, to go with that. So we decided to dormant seed the site here. So this was actually seeded on Halloween or very close to Halloween, October 25th. And uh, made it through good through the winter, vernalized, no problems. The goal here is to demonstrate the uh, producer practice, the common producer practice, which is basically 30 pounds of phosphate with the seed, 100 pounds broadcast in the spring. Uh, we wanted to compare that to a, a high management practice where we were looking at virtually doubling those rates of uh, both nitrogen, phosphorus, but also including potassium and sulfur as well. So that was our goal. and. Uh, we had a slow start. We couldn't get access to the irrigation right away this spring because they don't really turn it on until the threat of fall frost is done. So this dormant seeded stuff didn't really get any water till about the third week of May. Uh, since then, it's, it's gotten access to the water, gotten some pretty good rains, and it's looking pretty good. A little shorter than we would have anticipated or expected, but doing quite well. Uh, at this point in time, we're just we're just there's not visually a lot of differences to be seen here at this point and a lot of that is just due to the the timing of the moisture so what are some of the results you found so far with the winter wheat well we had a very good winter in regards to survival so in regards to producer fields the winter wheat is doing very well and uh, in most cases there was very little that was taken out this past uh, spring so it's it's all doing quite well yield potential looks uh, to be at least average to maybe slightly above average. We've got very low disease levels, low fusarium levels, so I think most growers are pretty encouraged. I would anticipate lots of the yields coming in that, uh, I don't know, 70 to 80 bushel range. So it should be fairly comparable to what the spring wheats are gonna be, look like they might potentially be yielding come, uh, come this fall as well. So if you were talking to a producer that is looking at growing winter cereals for the first time, what is the number one recommendation you would have? Well, it typically would have been something we, sh we probably should have had that discussion this spring. Uh, we typically like to seed into canola stubble. And so that means timing your planting so you've got an early harvest. Uh, the earlier you can get winter wheat planted, typically the better off that crop will be. Better winter survival and better yield potential come the following, uh, the following summer. Uh, so timing is critical and then I would probably discuss the fertility program with them and the importance of soil testing, making sure you have adequate levels of phosphorus and, and potassium. We're feeling that that's probably an underrated nutrient in uh, winter wheat production.